Hey there, fellow PCs. I'm Pruitt, and this is Jim Davis. And we get asked all the time about how to roleplay new characters, something great, something memorable, when sometimes all you need is an arrow to the knee, and you'll be remembered forever. It's roleplaying new characters on WebDM. If you like the video, please like, subscribe, and go ahead and ring that bell to get those notifications. The WebDM exists thanks to our Patreon patrons, the, the Web Demons. If you join the Web Demons, you'll get our weekly podcast, show audio, discounts that'll save you way more than $5 a month on books and dice, and so much more. Check out our free podcast episodes right now, including our free interview with Luke Gygax about all things D&D. All right, Jim, let's talk about new characters. Yeah. I mean, we've been playing a long time, but there's a lot of people out there. We get asked this a lot, you know, like how, mm -hmm. how do you role play a new fresh baby character right out of, right out of the oven, uh, still piping hot. I find myself really fortunate in this because most of my RPG playing up until the last year or so has been DM focused. And I, I liked it. I preferred it that way. I'm, you, mm -hmm. know, you know, I have friends be like, oh, I want you to play the game because you never get to play. Like I, I get to play all the time. But having played more than I DM'd over the last year or so, I've had to do more of this, right? <laughs> I've had to like come up with characters and just like play them. And I find that like I've refined my method for doing that, the, the sort of thing that I prefer. So I think a lot of players get intimidated. There's awkwardness. There's, you know, a lot of expectations that, uh, that go in to starting a new game and a new character. Oh yeah. And, uh, I used to write the elaborate backstory and mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. wanted to fit it into the world and try to fit it with the other people, even though it doesn't, yeah. you know, that's, that's something you need to figure out at your table. Like, do these people know each other? And we'll kind of get more into that later. But like, I used to have this big thing that I would do. And now I'm mm -hmm. leaning like as, as more and more I go along, like now it's just kind of like, no, they had this like one thing in their past. Yeah. And I find that it's much more freeing to don't write out all the details of what happened in the past. Yeah. You save that for in the game. So when somebody is in a situation, be like, oh, well, this is the, like that time at blah, blah, blah. And then you get to make it up right there mm -hmm. yeah. as a way of being able to give advice in game yeah. and to role play that. And so to just remember that, but find a, you know, not, not to rip off uh, city slickers or anything, but you just got to find the one thing. I like find one thing. one thing about your character that they yeah. kind of revolve around. And uh, I don't know, everything else, pretty much you can you can wing it after that. Coming up with it on the spot as a way to both, you know, shed light on your character's past, but also to tie it into something in the game. Mm -hmm. And and to, to, especially if it involves, you know, another player and, and their their character's sort of personality or backstory. That's that's a show, not a tell, right? Mm -hmm. And And I find that that's really what I strive for when I think of like playing a new character, I start making the character before I know who they are. Yeah. Bonus points for me if it's random generated, mostly because I hate having to make decisions and <laughs> I find the creative constraints of, of having this randomly determined set of parameters very satisfying, you know? Oh, I'm, Jim, I'm right there with you. I would create the whole backstory and then as I'm rolling my stats and making my character, I'm trying to conform the numbers to that preset narrative. Whereas yeah. now it's like, no, 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 no. Get your numbers first, get the randomness mm -hmm. of nature out of the way to yeah. illuminate how your character acts in the world. Yeah, And yeah, uh, I, I, I definitely find that that is a much more enjoyable way to play now. I really love it, I really do. And I find that like starting with a random element, whether it's ability scores or random background or something, can be a real springboard to, to having a really satisfying character. And in the last, just last six months, I've had three characters that I've made where it's like I know virtually nothing about them going in. And yet they are, two of them at least, I've played the third one long enough, but two of them are very satisfying characters and really enmeshed in the world, in the, in the dynamics of the party. They, they have real stakes mm -hmm. uh, in, you know, in what's going on. And it all started from just randomness uh, and, and forming a pattern and something cohesive out of this noise. Because it took me so long to really start playing games, I saw a lot of players who were like, come to the table with the fully fleshed out, intricate backstory. They already have a strong idea of who their character is. They're invested in it even before they've started playing, that there's so much at stake. The expectations are so high and they have such a specific idea of what they want the character to be 
that it's really hard to, to like live up to all that for both right. the player side and the DM side, right? Oh, definitely. Um, one of the things that got me on a kick of like, all right, no, all right, guys, no detailed backstories, was simply reading things in the backstory that's like, wait a minute, this could have been an adventure we ran. You know, this could have been something that we do together instead mm -hmm. of having it already written out. You know, that kicked off to me this idea of like, all right, I want to create a character that is ready for adventure. That's my number one priority when making a character. Mm -hmm. um, and then from that, what stats did I roll? What what arrangement are they going to be in? What else about their background or, or you know personality or just characteristics can I randomly determine? I love the tables in Xanathar's <laughs> guide to everything because it'll generate a background for you. And it's if you go with what the dice roll and and work within those creative constraints, I you'll find that you make characters that you wouldn't otherwise make. And if everything you make is very like deliberate and chosen and built out. The chances are your character is very samey. You know? Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> you know? Jim, you, you, thank you for setting up one of the points I was going to make because I, I found that the, one of the reasons why I go to the way I do characters now is I realized I was playing like one of four archetypes. That is what my characters had started to become. One of four. We used to keep know? a we used to keep a uh, what do you call it? Uh, not a raffle, but a, a you know a, a party pool. Yeah. Which which of Pruitt's characters are we going to get this time around? Yeah, is he going to play the spellcasty <laughs> electric guy? Is he going to play the tough fighter? Is he going to play... Uh -huh. yeah. Anyway, like talking about the random tables in Xanathar's, they're a lot of fun. Also, just like leaning on the backgrounds that you choose from. Don't fill out the details. That's yeah. you'll, you'll figure that out later. Just having a general idea uh, of your background and your T-biffs. Your, yes. your traits, bonds, uh, ideals, and flaws. Whether you roll those randomly or pick them. But yeah. just like letting those five pieces of information, I'm a soldier that has this trait, bond, ideal, and flaw. Like, yeah. oh, I'm a drunkard, but I like helping people, and I got a sister, uh, you know, and it, like, that, that's, uh, hey. That's all you, you need, really. That's all you need, okay. <laughs> uh, let's, let's start adventuring now. I, and I don't know if it's because I, I played so much as a DM, and yeah, I'm yeah. used to that, like, you know, creating a pattern out of the noise that are mm -hmm. random roles and the like. Um, that I just approach it differently, or if it's, you know, that I'm just way out of touch with the way people like playing their characters, but I find it a very, like I said, a very satisfying way. So mm -hmm. as an example for me, I'm playing in, uh, playing a ranger in Kobold Press's, uh, you know, Midgard, uh, campaign on their channel. I was initially going to be like a grizzled bandity type trollkin, you know, it's like, you know, it's, I'm channeling the Witcher you know, and all these other sorts of things. And I realized like, wait a minute, I am, I played this character before. Yeah. Like this is a stock gym character. That's when I was like, let's see what Xanathar's rolls up. And it turns out I made a 16 year old who, <laughs> who did not live with their mother and dad or mom and dad and was, you know, raised by their grandparents and had a rival and like all of this stuff emerged out of these roles. And then once I started playing, the opportunities to flesh out those details just kept coming and coming and coming so mm -hmm. i could make a, a comment about my brothers and like i don't know anything about them until i commented on it you know i don't i didn't know that you know this character's mother was uh you know missing because of entanglements between baba yaga and some of the other cosmic forces that went on i just know she wasn't around and so like being able to look for those moments of like this is a moment for me to show the party and the DM a little bit more of my background, you know, and deep, you know, add depth to the character. And I'm way more satisfied with Slain now as he's evolved than I ever would have been if I'd gone with my original idea of him just being a grizzled bandit looking to for redemption or something. Now mm -hmm. he's a socially awkward teenager, <laughs> you know, trying yeah. to find his estranged mother uh, and tangled up in a lot of Baba Yaga shenanigans doing it this way has produced such satisfying outcomes for me and for the people I've played with. I just really struggle to understand like where people who have a different play style come from. Not that their play style is wrong or they should, they should always do what I tell them to or whatever, but more just like what benefit, uh, you know, are you getting here? With that troll kin, uh, cause this yeah. is another, another facet of this question that pops up is, uh, do you do a voice for him? I didn't know what voice I was going to do until it came out of my mouth. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it developed over the first couple of sessions, like a lot of the, my characters, right? Like I will start out with something just different, something different than my normal voice, not necessarily to have something that I inhabit or, or like a persona or whatever, but just to differentiate when I'm talking, am I talking in character or out of character? Mm -hmm. And because so much of my playing now, even before COVID was over Zoom and, and sort of uh, you know, online chat based, having that different voice that like, okay, well, when we hear this, we know Jim is speaking in character mm -hmm. versus when I drop out and, and you know, talking my regular voice. Now I'm talking about metagame stuff. Where are you guys at? Are we sure we want to do this? Checking in with the DM, checking in with the players. Yeah. And I slip between that <laughs> effortlessly. <laughs> uh, again, uh, something that I think uh, my dungeon mastering experience has, has sort of uh, kind of given to me is that I don't see an issue with like, explaining something at an out of game way and then slipping into character voice and sort of talking in first person as if I'm the character and then back out and back in and back out. And it's not that I think it's unique. I think a lot of people do this, uh, but for me, it's very purposeful. Oh, de oh, definitely, man. During the Call of Cthulhu years over on Counter Roleplay, I did it all the time. Like, especially yeah. like in, when I was playing Koskov Romanovich and having to do a Russian accent and then, hey, what's, right. the, what's the, how do you do luck? Is that, oh, okay, so I'm going to try to find this thing, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. like flipping <laughs> back and forth. The best moment I had of that, though, was the, was the, my, my sniveling coward who is crying, oh, yeah. I'm literally crying. Tears are rolling down my face and I break my little monologue to be like, hey, uh, what's the rule for blah, blah, blah? Okay, cool. And then right okay. back into it. <laughs> and you know, it takes a little practice um, yeah. cause I don't have the years of DM experience of doing that, but I always love theater and acting and all that. I don't think players should worry about a voice. I, literally, that should be the last thing. Like, yeah, yeah, like you yeah. said, they should try to do what you do, which is, don't try to come up with a voice just as soon as the first time you get asked a question in game, see what comes out. See what um, comes out, Work, and it, workshop and, it. For and them. guess what? You can change it like over the yeah. first few adventures. And if people are like, hey, did your voice change? Be like, well, I was, I didn't know if I could trust myself around you people because right. actually <laughs> I'm a spy, you know, like, right. however you want to, however you want to play that, like work it into your game. You know, the awkwardness that comes from playing a new character, starting a new game, you know, you, especially if you've got a couple of campaigns that you've, you've had very mm -hmm. successful and they've, they've been long lasting, there's that anticipation of like, all right, we got to, we've got to make this thing gel. We got to make this thing come together. I got to have a character that is as rich and detailed and everything as my last character who I played for, you know, a year or more, whatever. Yeah. I'm like, that's a lot of pressure to put on yourself. To me, the, the only things I really focus on when I'm first role playing a character is creating something distinct that stands out, but mostly to me, right? That, that I'm interested in finding a way to relate to enough of the party members that mm -hmm. joining this group of adventurers feels natural and and not too incongruous you know a lot of times it seems like the hurdle that player players get with the new characters like you know would they pal around with these and a lot of times i do that by you know before the first game begins just asking other players do, you know is there any, anybody know me does anybody know my character before or you know did we meet on the road have we you know did we live in the same place and just sort of know each other in passing it doesn't mm -hmm. need to be a lot, but the last couple of times I've done that, some, there's always been at least one other player that goes, yeah, we've traveled together for a while. We know each mm -hmm. other. And like from the beginning, without needing to have a lot of investment in it, me and those other players have bounced off of each other. And I, I have at least a, a frame of reference for the rest of the party, a point of contact that I can say like, oh, so-and-so, maybe we did this on the road or, or, or I know you already. I know what you're like. I'm, I go along with you because I trust you in that. It doesn't need to be very fleshed out. It doesn't need to be, you know, super in depth or, or very, you know, emotionally satisfying. Mm -hmm. It's just enough to give you an excuse. Even in real life, how many times do you meet somebody and they're like, oh, you're from that town? Well, you know this person? Oh yeah, I yeah. know them. Oh, I used to hang out with their brother. Blah. Oh, yeah. you mean so-and-so and so. I've had that so many times in my life and you're like, oh, small world. <laughs> Like, yeah, no. it's the same for D&D, &D. <laughs> like, you know, oh, you're from Cormier. Do you know this, you know, Sir Brad Bradford of the, of the night? Sure. Oh yeah. It's okay to work out just like a, a single connection like that before. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Um, and I, I'm thinking of my own life, right? Like how many times do you start a job and you don't know anything about these people? You're forced to work together. Mm -hmm. You've got to find some commonality, some common ground to just go along. <laughs> and, event, and, and from that point of contact, from that group experience, that, that shared experience, then will come the investment. It seems like based on the questions we get at WebDM, a lot of the hiccups that new players face, a lot of that awkwardness comes from wanting the investment beforehand. Right. And of wanting to have that very satisfying, you know, experience before putting in the work. Yeah. And and it does require work. It requires you to pay attention to what the other players are doing, to pay attention to the world the DMs created, mm -hmm. to make a character that fits all of that. You know, you can do that before play has began by talking to them, what kind of character are you playing? What kind of game is this? But mm -hmm. if you're in it for the emergent elements, which I, I am, and the immersiveness of it, which I am, then having a very loosely defined character lets me mold that once I know where the campaign's going. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, that's why like investment requires you to invest. Like if you just <laughs> want it to happen, that's more of like inheritance. <laughs> it's sure, like, right? hey, <laughs> I want to inherit all these bonds before we ever like get together. And so uh, it's just uh, kind of like, you know, it's know what you're going for and know what you need. Of course, I think sometimes that awkwardness either helped or hindered, depending on how you look at it, if you're talking about, is this the same group of people you've always played with? Mm -hmm. Or are you literally yes. with a whole new group of people in a new setting, both physically and fantastically, uh, yeah. and you're having to create a new character with new people. And so it yeah. compounds that awkwardness a little bit. But I think that you should use that as an opportunity. Like, how does your character feel? Well, how do you feel right now? You have to get to know these people and you have to get to know their characters and realizing that there's a lot more that you can you you can pull from in a new mm -hmm. setting. I, I learned that playing at Vigilante. Like I, yeah. I think I became a much better role player because all of a sudden, like every week I was with a different group of people with this one character, like, oh, you know, and I'm playing the most vanilla fighter possible. <laughs> um, and it turned out, you know, he ended up being one of the badasses of the of the campaign. You know, absolutely. Absolutely. I think a good way to do that with new players mm -hmm. is to pay attention to when they introduce their characters. Yeah. Find something about them, something about what they've said, something about the choices they've made, whatever amount of backstory they have to make a connection with them. Mm -hmm. and, and either that's something that that you think your character would connect with them or it could just be something like, man, that's cool. I really like that. I'm going to find a way for my character to relate to that. Mm -hmm. And once you start reaching out as a player, once you start making the connections yourself, someone at some point will start reciprocating. Yeah. And it's when that reciprocation starts to happen and you start validating and building on each other's imaginations, each other's expressions through their character. That's when the investment occurs. And if you're doing that with a DM who is presenting adventures and situations that are at least plausibly related to your character and nothing, mm -hmm. simply, nothing that's like, oh no, I would never do that. <laughs> you know, never in the world, you know, would I do that. Uh, then you start getting a campaign where things very quickly get the sort of investment that it seems like a lot of people are looking for. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it requires some work on the player's part, but it doesn't require as much as you think it might. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. well, just a, like a basic part of like social bonding uh, is is a form of mimicry. And so mm -hmm. the one thing yeah. I like I like to do and I learned this at Vigilante is when people introduce their characters, pay attention to what they focus on in that introduction. Is it details about what they're wearing? Is it details about them as a person? Is it details of what what their appearance like relays as as uh, as a talking about um, like the actual class and coming back when it comes to your character description and using kind of some of the same language because that is going to, it's kind of a subconscious way of getting them involved in your character and you're showing, whether it's obvious or not, that you are involved in what they're saying because you're giving yeah. them complimentary data so that you can yeah. compare and see the scene together, right? Absolutely. But bonus points if you can do all of that and have a game mechanic to represent that kind of thing. Yeah. I, I absolutely agree with you. I, I did that with this, uh, with this Trollkin uh, Ranger in that I was like, well, I'm a, I'm a warrior type, but I do not yet have weapon training. Right. But there's a couple of fighters in our group who already have that. So maybe my character looks up to them. Maybe my character sees them and will always see them as the better warrior 
because they already knew what he was aspiring to know. Yeah. And that one of them happened to be a halfling fighter <laughs> was all the better because my guy's like a seven foot six inch trollkin. A, a, you know, fun first session moment to look at the halfling fighter and go like, well, you know, she's really a badass. Like I could learn a lot from her. <laughs> what a mighty and, warrior. Know, <laughs> right. And to tell and then to express that through the character going like, hey, I really think you're a badass. Like, can I train with you? And then we had a nice moment where our characters are training together and sparring and and the like. And it was an it it was through little things like that, you know, I was able to sort of build up, you know, my investment in the character. The group seems to like them, even though I'm constantly getting in trouble with my seven charisma. A, a lot of powerful moments of connection can come from those. And mm -hmm. if you've already got an idea of of what your character is, who they are, what they would do, who they like, who they don't like, like you're just putting more stuff in the way of looking at those moments and taking advantage of them. Other than not being in a rush, playing to find out, you know, keeping mm -hmm. the details loose. Let's say there's one other thing that I yeah. keep in mind when making a new character. And that is I have whoever they are, whatever their specialty is, whatever their background is, whatever their personality ends up being, they are there to have an adventure because mm -hmm. I am there to play a game. This is another sort of common thing that, I've, that I see in my own games sometimes, although much less so now than, than it used to, which was like someone's made a character, they've shown up, but nothing that I as a DM do has hooked them in. Yeah. And it's not for lack of trying on my part, lack, you know, lack of attempting to mold something to their interests. It's just that they've made a character that in their mind, because they've, they've so thoroughly invested in them, is like, I would not do this adventure. Why did you make this character? Yeah. <laughs> Why did you make someone that wouldn't go adventuring? <laughs> we're here to play football. I brought my baseball player. Right, what, exactly. You said we're playing a game, right? It's like, well, yeah, but you can't use a bat. <laughs> like. <laughs> Anyway, know your yeah, game and know your role, is. you know. What do you think this is, a 90s Saturday morning cartoon? Yeah, um, <laughs> Bo Jackson and friends. There's a point at which the character needs to conform to the game you're playing with real people. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing I always try to keep in mind, is that I am playing this game for a purpose that satisfies me as a living, breathing person. <laughs> and mm -hmm. no imaginary person that emerges from that, no, no fictional element that I create can ever supersede the fact that as a human being, I have sat down to engage in this game with other human beings. There are limits to what I can do. There are limits to what's acceptable for me to do. That's okay. And I always want to have them at the forefront of my mind because then I will make a character that's going to sing. Yeah. I'm going to make a character that is going to contribute to the group, that's going to be there for the adventure, that's, that's not going to have the DM jumping up through a whole bunch of hoops to get me involved. And I sometimes will tell the DM that straight up. I'm just like, you do not have to worry about me. I will find a reason to do the thing. Right. And mm -hmm. as we get to know each other, I will flex my freedom and, and the like uh, as seems appropriate. But you can count on me. To, to bite the hook right. because that's why I'm here. And to me, that's like probably the most important thing about playing a new character and role playing them is just to be ready to engage with the game mm -hmm. and not put too many barriers in front of yourself through predetermined choices. That's like, yeah, my character wouldn't do that or they wouldn't do this or this doesn't appeal to them. Mm -hmm. It's like, what if it did? <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and you don't have to have tons of buy in. You can grouse. You can be like, my character would do this, but not without complaining. Then you just describe that they complain a lot and that's it. You know, you don't have to yeah. role play all that out. <laughs> to me, that's the ultimate consideration. If you've showed mm -hmm. up to play a game, then make a character who would participate in the game being played. If I could identify like one thing that is a commonality across a lot of the questions we get at DM or WebDM in terms of this subject, it would be like, you didn't make characters that are that want to adventure or your party if you're the dm did not make characters who want to adventure they seem to want to play a different game mm -hmm. and maybe that's what you should be playing you know if everybody feels this way and you don't mind then play this other game that seems like everybody created characters for a lot of times it seems like it's one person and everybody else is on board in which case early on in a campaign is the exact time to remold an idea I'm not telling you guys to completely scrap your precious OCs, your, 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 you know, I've got them as well. <laughs> I've got my characters where I'm like, I don't want anything bad to happen to them. And damn you yeah. if it does, yeah. you know, <laughs> but to not necessarily give up on that, to not just completely scrap it and play in a way that's unsatisfying, but to leave enough wiggle room that if there's hiccups within those first few sessions, you're able to adjust 
yeah. and able to say like, you know what, maybe this part of my character is not working for this game uh, because I haven't expounded on upon it a lot. I don't have a mm -hmm. lot of investment in it myself. I'm just going to quietly forget about that part and focus on this other stuff mm -hmm. or let the DM know like, hey, I kind of went with these bonds and ideals and flaws, but I think this flaw is really going to be trouble for this group. You know, <laughs> mm -hmm. maybe I pick a different one and use that to help me role play and determine who the character is. I think that's perfectly reasonable to ask that, you know, it takes a while to get your character up and running. So, you know, I know that a lot of players have been burned. They've mm -hmm. played in games where they thought they were going to get a lot of investment and they didn't. It ended too soon. They didn't gel with the group. They yeah. had DMs who weren't responsive to them. It's a lot to ask to tell those players who are looking for a certain experience. They want that you know, time spent with a character who is, you know, that really resonates with them to hold back, to not put as much into their characters. I look at it a different way. You know, if that's your experience, if, if, you've, if you've had a lot of false starts to a campaign, a lot of mismatches in the groups you've played with, then keeping things loose, keeping things, you know, waiting a while to detail things, it's gonna lessen the sting of, of those sort of disappointments where you realize like, man, the kind of game I want to play in is not the one this group's going to deliver, or mm -hmm. I really can't stand this other person, <laughs> you know, and I'm, I'm looking for a way out or, you know, the DM's just not throwing things my way, then you got a lot less to lose. I really do think that, that approaching character creation from a way that's like loose, use random elements, think about the, the game concerns first, be ready to adventure, all those things. You might find that a group you wouldn't otherwise gel with, that you do gel with because you've made a character that's specifically for them and that group. Yeah. Uh, and then, good times ahead, happy gaming. <laughs> yeah, you're the activating agent. <laughs> if you like our advice for your games, then why don't you come check us out and watch us play? Yeah, head on over to our second YouTube channel, WebDM Plays, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I think I'm just going to call everybody fellow PCs. Hmm. Your pc -ness. Well, I was just saying, <laughs> when you have an NPC put their former pc -ness in your face, well, that's like taking an arrow to the meat. No, that's just dumb. <laughs> <laughs>